Hello guys, Nandini Karmarkar here with some early inspiration for your Christmas cards. I have three easel cards today using a variety of techniques and I'm showcasing the beautiful snowflake stencil as well as the texture pastes. So let's get started. I have two sizes of circles which I have die cut out of white paper. I'm going to be using the Holly Jolly Christmas stamp set for the sentiments. And today I'm going to be showcasing the beautiful snowflake uh, stencil by Craft Angles. The other Craft Angles products that I'm going to be using uh, are three texture pastes. I'll be using the Unicorn Dreams, which is a lovely glittery paste, white and clear. I'm also going to be using one of my favorite products from Craft Angles, that is the beautiful liquid watercolors. I will begin by taping my paper circle to the back of the stencil with some washi tape. This is an important step because you definitely don't want your stencil to move in the middle of your stenciling. Once my paper is secure, I'll just flip the stencil over and start using the Unicorn Dreams texture paste. I'll use a spatula to do this but you can always use an old credit card or an old ruler. I just prefer using the spatula. Be careful to apply an even pressure when you're using the unicorn texture paste. This texture paste has tiny sequins on it, so it's a little rough and gritty. So you need to be very careful and make sure that you get into all the nooks and crannies of the stencil. I prefer to use the flat of my spatula to apply an even pressure and spread a thin layer on the paper. I'll carefully peel the paper from the back of my stencil now and leave it aside to dry. Always remember to wash your stencil and spatula immediately after using texture paste because if the texture paste dries on them, it becomes waterproof and you won't be able to scrape it off. Let's create a beautiful plaid background for our next card. I'm going to be using the mystical waters and poolside colors for this. I'll first take mystical waters and add a few drops on my craft mat and then I'll use a flat brush to draw lines across my paper. You can do this freehand. If you're not very confident, you can also lightly draw pencil lines. These colors dry very fast and you don't really need to use watercolor cardstock for this. In my case, I'm going to be using just plain white cardstock. Next, I'll move on to poolside. I'll use a flat brush again but a much broader one. I'll just drop a little bit of the watercolor on my craft mat and then use my brush to again draw stripes across the paper. To create the flat effect, I will simply rotate my paper by 90 degrees and repeat the stripes with mystical waters and pool siding. Just remember to dry your paper in between layers so that it doesn't mix and become muddy. I dried my flat background thoroughly with a heat gun and now I will do some stenciling on top of the snowflake stencil and the white texture paste. For a third background, I'm going to be using the clear texture paste, but I'm going to stain it with my liquid watercolors. I'm again using shades of blue to do this, and I will of course begin by tipping the paper to the back of my stencil with some washi tape. I'm starting with the poolside ink. I'll simply scoop up a small quantity of the texture paste with my palette knife and then mix it with the liquid watercolor. If you don't have liquid watercolors, don't worry, you can use anything like your distress inks, distress oxide inks or any dye ink to do the same. I'll gently spread the tinted texture paste over the stencil. I'm not covering the entire uh, stencil with this color because I want to add uh, two more colors. Just Remember to clean your 
palette knife uh, thoroughly before you move on to the next color to avoid any contamination. I'll move on to Mystic Waters and repeat the process. Now I'll add just a drop of the blackberry liquid watercolor to the texture base to get a darker shade. Once my stenciling is done, I will wipe away texture paste from the craft mat and then carefully peel the paper away from the stencil. I'll just leave this to dry and then come back and show you how I assembled my cards. So here are the three panels that we've created today. I just love the shimmer on the first one, this is the tinted one and then the plaid background. Now you'll notice uh, the texture paste has dried and is sticking out. Uh, so I'll just take a scissor and trim this panel. I'll spice up the panels further by adding some inking. I'm going to be using uh, dye inks and uh, distress inks to do this. I'm also using the blending brush which came along with my DD. Adding a little bit of inking around the edges uh, especially always makes the panels pop. already stamped the sentiment from the uh, Holly Jolly Christmas stamp set on strips of white uh, cardstock. So the panels that we uh, prepared and also the card tracks the settings aside and take you through the process of creating an easel card. For the easel card, I folded white cardstock into half and then cut the both the pieces together with my die making sure that there was a bit of the fold left on the top of the circles. This creates the hinge that we need to make the easel stand. I also folded one circle into half and scored it well. To assemble the easel I will apply glue to one half of the circle. Make sure you do not cover the score line with your glue otherwise your mechanism will not work. I prefer using liquid glue here because it is stronger and it also gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I will fold the circle and then place my card front on top and then adjust it till the bottom circle and the top circle are perfectly aligned. Once the easel bases were ready, assembling the cards is super easy. I just took each base and glued the panel uh, with the liquid glue. The sentiments were are already popped up on uh, bits of foam. I just glued them into place. One last thing is a tiny pearl which I will put to make sure that my easel stays propped open. You can use anything with a little bit of dimension for this. I like using pearls because they seem to go very well with the snowflake theme. So here are our completed easel cards. I hope you enjoyed these techniques and will give them a try. Do keep visiting the Craft Angles blog and YouTube channel for more inspiration throughout the month. Bye!